Again, before I get into my week, I wanted to share one last time that I'm in the Worldwide Kish contest. I'm a finalist with my Cherubs painting. It's a Facebook contest and the public can vote by hitting the like button on your favorite paintings. So if you like my cherub painting, I have a link in the description box down below where you can go and vote by hitting the like button. And the last day is Tuesday. So the contest is almost finished. Now for my Atelier Diary. This is week seven of the fall trimester of 2017. So last week I've been working on my transfer drawing of Brian for the long pose figure painting that I'm working on. And so on Monday, I transferred the drawing onto my canvas. And so what I do is I take tracing paper and I put it up on my drawing and I take a marker and I trace out the big simple lines that make up the pose of Brian. And then I take that tracing paper off. I flip it around and work on the reverse side and I will trace over those marker lines with really soft charcoal. I really like using the yellow sticks of charcoal by Neutrum. I don't remember exactly what it's called, but it's the one with the yellow sticker in the yellow box. And then I will put the tracing paper up onto my canvas and get it all lined up where I want the figure to be on my canvas. And then I take hard charcoal that's sharpened roughly into a blade-like shape. And I use, again, I use Neutrum and I use the, well, the hard Neutrum charcoal, which is in the blue box. And I trace over those marker lines, so doing that is pushing the soft charcoal onto the canvas wherever I push the hard charcoal onto it. And then um, when I'm finished, I take the tracing paper off, and then I have a charcoal representation of my drawing on my canvas. And before doing transfer drawings, I had used paint to transfer, so it's the exact same method. I just, instead of using that soft charcoal on the back of the tracing paper, I will put a shadow color of paint on the background, but I really prefer doing the charcoal because doing the paint, I feel like it's a little bit more permanent and a little harder to get it to look really soft um, and kind of a more naturalistic because it'll have a hard line, thin line of paint everywhere, but using the loose charcoal and not spraying a fixative over it. so. Um, using my brush I can really easily move the charcoal around or if it didn't transfer as well as I wanted to I can um, well it's I have a lot of freedom that I can move the line when I'm putting paint over the charcoal to wherever I want it to be I feel like the transfer went pretty well I feel like the legs I had it stronger in my transfer drawing than how it transferred onto my canvas um, in the future I think if I'm doing figure paintings, which I that's what I want to do, uh, mostly figure paintings, is to probably draw straight on the canvas and not do a transfer drawing because I feel like when you do a transfer drawing, you it's impossible to get a perfect transfer. You're always going to um, lose something in the transfer. So um, I don't know. I would like in the future to eliminate doing it on paper and transferring it to the canvas and do it rather straight on the canvas. Oh yeah, and then so transfer it onto the canvas and then I use paint and go over all those lines and fill in the shadow shapes. I do use a tiny bit of turpentine on my brush, but it's really, I'll dip the brush in the turpentine and then wipe the bristles off in my, uh, in a paper towel. So it's just a tiny, tiny bit. And I feel like that is just enough to get the paint to be more fluid but not necessarily inky because I don't I still like it to be kind of like you're almost I guess an in-between of pure dry brushing paint on and then having that inkiness that the paint can get with the turpentine I like something that's in between that. Tuesday then I added in the background and I'm doing something a little bit different this time I don't know if I'm going to keep it or not but usually when I do backgrounds I try and make it as simple as possible because I really want to be putting all of my time and energy onto the figure because it is um, a study of the figure. And so if there are things in the background like, well there's always the floor that the model's standing on and I'll hint at that. Sometimes the model is sitting on something or leaning up against something or holding a pole and I, I usually just 
hint at those things and I don't want to draw too much attention to them. Uh, this though, in this pose, it has something interesting going on where the backdrop behind Brian, the, the sheet is pinned up in the back and it kind of almost looks like, from my angle, like a, a tent or something. And I think that could be an interesting narrative quality for the painting. So I started bringing that out. So behind Brian on his left side, I have it pretty dark. And then on the right side, it's lighter. So um, still, I, I want to make sure that there's not too much attention brought back there and also not too much of my time spent on the background because most of it should be on the figure since it is a an academic figure painting and I'm studying the figure. But I think that might be interesting to kind of show something back there as well, a, a little bit more than I normally do. But I feel like if, if I can't get it successful, if it's too distracting or taking too much time uh, away, then I think I'll probably just simplify it down to a more um, one basic like, general tone. Oh, and then I also darken the shadows a little bit on Brian as well because I'm trying to keep this relationship between the background and the shadows and treating the background and the shadows as, as one shadow shape so then the, the light of Brian can really stand out as one light shape against a really big shadow shape. On Wednesday, I, I redid the background in the shadows, shapes that are in Brian as well. I feel like um, the background, uh, it was kind of not looking as rich as it could, which sometimes happens when I use the turpentine. So um, just trying to get things to look a little bit more rich and deep and dark. And did the same thing with the shadow shape on Brian, trying to to get that to be more unified and a little darker how it actually is. And while I'm doing that, I'm also correcting the shapes and the shadow line as much as I can to get it uh, to be as sharp as it needs to be or more diffused. And this day I started blocking in the light shape. And um, the last figure painting I did of John, I feel like I was starting to understand how to, how to actually block in a figure really simply. So I'm trying to do the same thing with Brian and um, I don't know it's not it's tricky it's still um, I feel like I know more what I'm doing but it's I still find it very <laughs> difficult to do so I just started doing that on Wednesday Thursday I, I do pretty much everything that I did the day before on Wednesday so I'm putting more paint down on the background to try and get it more accurate and that deep value that it is same thing with the shadow shapes and then with the light shapes uh, there were some parts that I couldn't get to, like I think I got mostly the, the midsection of Brian, so his torso and legs, so this time I was working on his face and his arms um, and trying to correct the light shapes as well. Still finding it difficult to try and, to, try and um, to do this. I think we've also had sunny days as well, which sunny days when you're painting under natural light are not preferable to cloudy days. The sunny days, everything kind of looks more gray and dull and not as an intensely beautiful light falling on the figure like it is on cloudy days. So Friday then, I start off the day by pushing the, the head and the, the hanging arm down into that more purpley reds like it is. And I am working with the, the shadow shape and the dark half tone as it goes out into the light and trying to make the values of the light more accurate. Um, this day it's a really nice cloudy day so everything is more colorful and that more intense light so I'm, I'm trying to work with the light shape then to try and get that to be more accurate with the colors that I'm seeing. Magda did come around and she said it looked like I started losing that nice impression that I had originally had in the transfer drawing and when I transferred it to my canvas. And she was saying that it was a bit confusing with what the, the chest was doing and the stomach. And she pointed out that the, the bent leg is, I elongated the lower part of the leg too much. Um, and she just was saying that it looked like I was losing control. And that's definitely how I felt too, like I was starting to lose control of the painting now. I think 
um, with blocking in and I was focusing on the whole light shape and the whole shadow shape at the same time. It's, um, it's a big painting and I think when I was working on the impression of it, I started to lose the drawing and then when I would try and get the drawing back together, I would start to lose the impression. Um, and I, yeah, I think I, I just started losing control and I think one reason that is, is also because I was trying to bring the whole entire painting together all at once, which is what I, I want to be doing, but I, I don't know if I'm that good yet that I can um, kind of juggle all those things for the whole entire paint, painting. So I think next week to fix that and get things kind of a little bit more orderly and naturalistic with strong drawing and a strong impression, I think I might focus on still as big as areas as I can, but something that I think I control can can control a little bit more. So maybe I would just focus on the whole torso or maybe all of the legs or something like that, just so I feel like I can get it to be more orderly now. So um, I felt like I, I, I got to fixing the, the leg, but the leg now kind of looks noodly and like I kind of lost structure in it, though I'm getting the proportions a bit more accurate, though I think something is still weird about the lower leg, like it still maybe be, might be, I think it still is a little bit too long. Um, I started fixing things with the, the stomach, though maybe the shadow shape under the stomach is a little too high. Um, the chest I think is better a little bit, but I, the left... Uh, shadow shape of the armpit. I think I need to fix that a little bit because I don't know if it makes sense with the whole chest and the head. I made it a tad bit smaller and I think that helps the proportions as well. So um, yeah, Monday I'm going to have a lot of cleaning up to do and just tr still trying to keep this painting going along so I can get it closer to nature. And now on for my still life. So at the end of this week I like the direction my still life is going, but at the start of the week, I was really hating it. And I was talking to Matt about this and saying why I was hating it. And I don't think it's a bad painting where I had it at the start of the week, but there were elements that I didn't love about it and parts of it that I thought were boring or not handled in such a beautiful way. And so that was just making me hate it because I usually only love or hate something. There's no in between. <laughs> so um, so I was telling Matt that I like the garlics and I really like how those are painted. I feel like there's areas of tightness on them but also really loose fluid areas and I think the garlics are beautifully painted. Same thing with the the rug that's hanging in the background. I, I really like how I painted that. I think that's interesting and it's painted differently than the garlics and they both kind of show the texture that they they are. So the two elements basically that I don't like is most mostly the wood plank. I don't like how it's painted. And then also the pot where which there's areas in that that I that I do like, but I feel like to make me really love how I painted that pot, I should I could push it more in certain areas. Um so since I didn't like the wood plank the most, I was studying that and the chipped parts in the, the front of the, the wood plank, I was seeing that that needs to be more colorful and a little bit more bright. And I wanted to make sure that I was painting it in a way that would really show that it is a wood plank and have variation to the paint too. So I, I wanted to paint it differently than I did the garlic in the rug. And so what I did was I, I mixed up a lot of colors that I saw in the wood plank, in the chipped areas. And so then I took a palette knife and I started to apply the paint with a palette knife. And I would kind of use a brush sometimes too, or just a palette knife. And it, it was really fun to paint that way. And I really like how it looks now. I'm loving the chipped parts of the front. And I also took my palette knife and what well, I was applying a lot of paint with the palette knife to the chip parts. And then the, the front part, of it, I would take my palette knife and just have a little bit of paint on it and scraped down it, and that was kind of giving the the look of uh, grains of wood and how kind of dust would fall into the cracks, how, how it does. And so I was really liking how that was looking. I really don't like the top plane 
of the plank yet, um, but I made I, I made it better. So I don't necessarily hate it, hate it. I just don't, I'm not in love with it yet. And I was using the palette knife with kind of scraping across it as well with a tiny bit of paint. And then also using my brush a lot um, in kind of shorter strokes. Um, I don't know how to describe it, I guess. And I don't, still not in love with it. So Matt was telling me that he can show me next week on how something that I can do to improve the top part of the wood plank. And then for the pot, um, I was really not liking the dust on the top. I felt like I could make that look better. And so I feel like I, I did improve it a lot this week with kind of um, keying up the dust a little bit and unifying parts of it. And I worked on that de decorative part on it, though Magda was talking to me about how I can push that more to make it better. And... Yeah, there's still more I want to do with the pot and the top part of the plank, but other than that, I'm loving other parts of the painting but hating other parts still, so um, I'm hoping that I can bring this painting up and get it done soon, but I don't want to stop until I stop hating parts of the painting as well. Okay, and then for extras during the week, we have been drawing in the evening on Mondays a portrait, and um, this scroll I've drawn her three different times for a portrait and the two time the first two times I don't really want to I don't want to show there well I'm doing this with comparative measuring instead of side size so it's something different for me and I'm still getting used to doing this so the last one that I did um, this Monday I think it turned out decently though I, she's coming in more so I'm gonna push this this drawing along more but this is really good practice for me and then um, on the Tuesday evening drawing this guy came in and <laughs> he well like when he took his robe off you like you had no idea that he had like all of these muscles he was just like this really friendly nice guy and then he takes his robe off and is like it looked like his shoulders just kept expanding and he looked like Hercules and so this was really really fun to draw I really like Matt Matt posed him and I really like the pose of this. Um, it would be really cool to do him as a long pose, but I think he can't do a long pose. But I've been having this, or I had this idea of, of doing um, um, an atlas painting with the, the god atlas. And this kind of, ins, ins, this definitely inspires me to uh, work on that concept more. So this is a really fun drawing to do. Oh, I also used white chalk on it, which I've never done with a pencil drawing before. So I don't know how, it's interesting. I don't know if I'll I don't know. It's interesting. All right, and so that was basically my week. Again, if you would like to vote on Facebook for my chairs painting, I would really appreciate that. And the last day is Tuesday to do that, and the link to do that on Facebook is in the description box down below.